Well, hello everybody. Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's Matthew devotional. We are uh, in this passage about Peter confessing Christ. And there's one thing uh, I thought about that might be a good good uh, thing to finish on for this section. At the, in the beginning, uh, it says, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi with his disciples, Setting is interesting. Um, you may recall if you were here for this sermon, and if you haven't, please go go watch it. It's super good. Um, I know both the content of, of Isaac's and Sam's were, were super good. Uh, and one of the most important things about this whole place of declaration is it it was this place of foreign worship, right? Yeah, if you go back really far. Um, you have um, Baal worship that was, there were temples to Baal in this area. Um, you step forward and it becomes a place where the, the Greek and uh, Greek gods start to take over, right? That's why Caesarea Philippi used to be called Panaeus after the god Pan, who was the son of Hermes, who was the son of Zeus. And um, horrible things happened, like kind of like the most... Um, um, ridiculous, crazy, defiling, sexual debauchery would happen in this worship of the god Pan in order to, and it's the idea of bringing up the gods out of their rest in the place of the dead, right? There's this cave you may have uh, recalled, um, um, either pastor you listened to pointing out this cave that exists in Caesarea Philippi where people, it was a place of worship of Pan, um, and there were temple complexes there. And that, so you go from Baal worship to Greek god worship to uh, Roman Caesar worship even. Uh, and that's where it gets its name. Caesarea Philippi was named that by Herod Philip. Uh, and it was in honor of Caesar, uh, but also in honor of himself, right? Uh, and it also differentiated its name from Caesarea on, on the... Uh, that was on the water um, over to the west. And the reason why I say setting is important is that the, for some reason, the way this all lays out, we see that this confession takes place outside of Israel in foreign lands, but not just foreign lands, in lands or in, in places where um, horrific, you know, other God worship happened uh and this is where he would say you know to peter you know the uh, the gates of of hades uh, won't prevail and and he's giving the keys of the kingdom and so forth and there's something about this this moment that's super important because a turn is happening but what i want to ask you is that how do you see your setting like if you really think about it, we are in a place that's very different from then uh, in many ways and similar in others. There is um, there's this idea that Peter's making this this foundational um, confession of Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of the Living God. We all made our confession in a particular place and time that's different than there. But again, look at the similarities. And, and I kind of, the reason I'm pointing this out is, do you see the setting in which you have made this confession as a place that is good and no problems? Or do you see it as, it's actually a place that's much like Caesarea Philippi. That where you are, where you actually confess your faith and uh, by God's grace and will, you are proclaiming his name into it. Is this a place that's more like Caesarea Philippi? Or is it like, oh, it's a place that's already good, right? <laughs> and I think um, whether you realize it or not, we tend I oftentimes to live our lives as if everything that we're in is fine. And what that does is it has a seat comfort in the place that we're at. Um, and I have to imagine the disciples and Peter, as they went to Caesarea Philippi, it wasn't necessarily a comfortable setting. Um, they, they, in fact, arguably, they left Israel 
because it was uncomfortable. They were worried about what was happening. So they're moving from one discomfort into another. Um, and too often, uh, yeah, I feel like we get super comfortable in the setting and we're in as if, as if, even though I think you would, you and I would all agree that yes, there is the same, t it's, it's a different sort. It's categorically different, but it is a kind of a worship of things or, or, um, things that we put above where God is meant to be, right? God is meant to be the, at the top of, of our worldview, the central point of our worldview, such that everything gets filtered through his will and his way and his desires for his image bearers and how we're supposed to live. That's the way it's supposed to be. But all around us, that's not happening. And in fact, even in our own lives, we have to be very careful. Uh, we have to be paying attention to what's what's what is reigning supreme in the lenses through which we see even the setting around, even the place, the, the city we're in, the country we're in. And, and the point is not to see, like, to go and see how evil everything is. I think that's actually pretty easy to do. It's not, to, the, the point is, don't trick yourself and think you're not living in a place like Caesarea Philippi. Because it is, and we have to be super careful. Because, you know, as people live their lives out in ways they are, at least we could say, not worshiping God. But they seemingly are worshiping something else, whether it be money or job or sex or whatever. They are worshiping something because that's where their time and their energy and their mental like thought, all it all goes toward these things and not toward Jesus. And we can get caught up in the same things. When everyone around you, in the setting that you're in, is actually worshiping these things, we must be very careful that we don't get caught up in that worship. I need that message too. Um, I was just saying this to someone recently. I love that I can order me some Amazon and have it in two days. Like whatever I need, I can just order it and it's there within a couple of days, right? And I think we have to be careful. We're soaking in the waters um, that's like Caesarea Philippi and we want to make sure that we're not pointing to the world, that we're worshiping the same things they are. So, today, think about it. What are the things where, like, maybe we can slightly... Uh, and by the way, I'm not saying you should never buy anything from Amazon or anything. My point is, is that in our hearts, the comfort and ease and simplicity of how we live starts to raise in our lens and our worldview such that it, it, seem, it may diminish God, or at least it may diminish how people see how we see God and how we worship God. So there's care that needs to be taken. And in some cases, we, need to, we do need to rip certain things out of our lives because it's just not, it's not the same. It, it's, it's, it's taking a precedent over our worship of our king. So, as always, I point you back to, there was one who came who did not fear going to the cross, knew the pain and anguish of it, but went to it for you and for me. And that needed to happen. There was nothing else that was going to save us. There was no one who had the power. There was no one who had the clout. There was no one who deserved the honor and glory and that would do this on our behalf that would have saved, saved us. Nobody. But the one who could and would did for you and for me. He hung on a cross. He was scourged. He was just treated mock like a mockery for you and for me. Didn't have to do that, but he did. And it was necessary for you and me to be reconciled back to the God of the universe. And how thankful should we be? So when we live out our days, wherever our setting is, wherever the place is at which we have made our confession or we continue to make our proclamation, we have to be careful that the, that the, the, <clears throat> that the, 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 environment of that place doesn't seep in to how we live in, in a way that actually diminishes God. So pray with me today that th through seeing what Jesus has done on the cross and seeing how good he is and paying attention to the character of God and how he would chase us down, that that would help us to live better here and now, right today in the places that we inhabit. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. Let this be a day where we actually reveal your glory and everything that we do. That we that you, 
your glory would be on our lips. Maybe it's in the silent, maybe it's in our heads that we would be just thinking, no, thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the faithful one. You are the good one. You are the one who gives mercy and you are the one who gives forgiveness. You are the one who saves us and no one else could. We definitely couldn't. Thank you for that. Help us to honor you and give you glory this day in all the things that we do. Help us to, to give glory where it's deserved. Help us to see those things in our lives where maybe we are, we're diminishing you. Help us to see that, please. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, until we see you next time.